In this video, we are going to see procedural modeling versus the new AI modeling, which is used by many people in these days. But let me tell you this, procedural modeling is so interesting. They using that for decade by 3D and game industry. For example, if they want a variant from one asset, let's say a city of different building, instead of modeling building one by one, they will use procedural modeling and generate different buildings. So that's so efficient. In other hand, a new AI modeling, it's new and it's have a many challenge. So in this video, we are going to see the pro and cons and we're going to see what will happen. Let's begin. Hi everyone, this is Dyson. Welcome to my channel. And to be honest, I'm so happy to see you guys, especially after these 12 days of nonsense. So yeah, we are not living in perfect world. So without further ado, let's begin. In this video, first, I will show you the procedural modeling, the pro and cons. And then we're gonna see the new AI modeling and we're gonna compare these two techniques. But first, let me thank these amazing people joining us in our website. Thank you guys. You make my journey so delightful. By the way, I will put this in file on the website for you guys. So let's begin. So we're going to use the chess pieces example. What I mean by that, for example, I will take this chess pieces and I will combine that with these letters you see with this deformation and this amazing uh, blending with the main geometry you see this is with and without so first let me show you how we can do that in houdini as you can see we have the chess horse and i will convert that to a vdb polygon and on the other hand i will go with a sphere a vdb and i want to combine that and i want to subtract that you see using this difference operation and this is the uh, the part i want to replace and on the other hand i will use this font with this e letter as you can see and i want to convert that to vdb2 and now i want to combine this uh, letter or font with the uh, main geometry you see and then we're gonna replace it in here and resize that and we have that and we're gonna convert that to polygon this is the main pipeline as you can see we are missing the deformation this is so flat and I uh, I'm not into it honestly so we're gonna use different technique to deform this uh, e letter so for that we're going to use lattice deformation as you can see and we're going to use cube for bounding or surrounding this e letter and of course we're going to increase the segment or this polygon for more deformation and on the other hand i will use sculpt to sculpt this uh, cube for example i want to show you and let's go to this option and as you can see we have the deformation of e letter but this is by hand this is manually honestly it this is not procedural you see i want to match this e letter with this section of chess horse so for that i will use uh, the section we delete from the first part and i want to isolate that with this different combined vdb node and as you can see we have that and after that, I will convert that to polygon. So I will use that as a guide to deform this E letter. And as you can see, if I delete the sculpt and connect this to third input, it's not going to work because it's need the same topology. So for that, we need to use that as a guide to deform this cube. So for, for that, I will use the ray node. So the ray node, it's a very amazing node and as you can see i will connect this to second input and i will use minimum distance operation as you can see this is the cube deform for our target geometry you see this is so amazing and so procedural so as you can see now the e letter it's deforming base of this 
geometry. So as you can see, now we have amazing result. You see that? And of course, you can have a, a match size for this sphere, the sphere we placed at the first section, and we can match it with the E letter position. And as you can see in here, you can use a smooth VDB to blend these two geometry. And guess what? With this simple pipeline, we have amazing procedural modeling. You see, you can place this one whenever you want. You see that? And this is amazing. And I did the same thing with these chess pieces and that turns out very well, honestly. So this is the procedural modeling. And as you can see, you need a lot of knowledge to do that. For example, you need to know the 3D package. For example, if you're using Houdini or Blender, you need to know the environment. You need to know 3D concepting, for example, VDB or uh, vertices, polygons, all this stuff. But the pro is it will give you a lot of power and a lot of flexibility. So now let me show you the new AI modeling. So I will use Crea.ai. This is the amazing tools. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by Crea.ai. I don't know why. I talk a lot about Crea.ai in this channel. So uh, as you can see, first you need an image. I will use Crea.ai real-time future. As you can see, the prompt is chess horse pieces with E letter inside the form and it's not going to work this is pain in the yeah yeah i even use chat gpt but i couldn't tell him my imagination so this is so tricky the prompt is not going to work to be honest so instead of text guidance i will use the visual guidance so let's go to composite section and as you can see i will guide Crea.ai by image. So I will reset the background to white color and I will use this chess horse. You can find this image on internet. And as you can see, I will draw black stroke here and I will clean this part as we clean that in Houdini. And as you can see, it will refine that. And I will use this color to create this line for E letter. So as you can see, if I change the prompt to chess, it will give me something like that. You see, it's more convenient like that instead of text prompt. That's will not going to work. So as you can see, you can use different model and AI strength, but we're going to use that and we're going to download this result. So now guess what? We're going to use image to 3D model. The Crea has that. And we're gonna upload this image in here and we're gonna use Haina 3D model. Yeah, it's so hard to pronounce. And we talk about this stuff in this video, by the way. And as you can see, Crea generating our 3D model. But as you can see, yeah, it's not going to work with this black area, black area, sorry, you see that? So the problem is with the image. So I brought that in Photoshop. And as you can see, I separate the subject from the picture. And as you can see, I cleaned that with the white background. Pay attention guys, with the white background. So as you can see, I fed that to Kriya. And guess what? Now it's working. So this is a challenge stuff and you need to deal with. And as you can see, we have our model. Man, this is so sexy. And of course, we have our texture. And I will download that as a FBX file. And I'm loading that in Houdini. And we're going to use match size to fit the scale. And we're going to use quick shade to load our picture or texture. And as you can see, this is what we have so far. And as you can see, this is the retopology. This is not good. You, you need to retopology that if you want to animate that or anything else. And as you can see, this is the result. In one hand, we have an amazing AI technique uh, modeling. And in other hand, we have 3D procedural modeling. You see, they have the pro and cons. For example, the AI modeling, if you want something new and fast, you can use the AI modeling. But if you want something more control to it 
you need to go with procedural modeling as you can see so these two techniques each functional in these days the call is yours so with that i hope you enjoy this video see you in the next one goodbye